on the flip side of things. Um, thank you, Greg, today. Um, so he's going to be telling us about their AI-driven cybersecurity solution for critical infrastructure. And I am by no means a cybersecurity wizard. I told you guys that earlier. But um, from my understanding, this is the only solution that we've seen so far that actually monitors the raw electrical signals before they're converted into those data pockets. So I'm um, hoping for a great presentation from you, Eric, and I will hand it over to you. Thank you very much, everyone. Let me share my screen. Okay, I believe I'm on. You are good to go. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone. And thank you for your time uh, for letting us presenting our technology, SIGA, related to cybersecurity protection on critical infrastructure focused, but also related to water industry. Uh, just a few words about myself. Uh, I have more than 22 years of experience dealing with uh, high-end clean technologies with uh, water domain, uh, tackling different challenges, starting from water quality to meet different processes um, and different sectors, public, industrial, private, real estate, hospitality, uh, healthcare, army, etc. Uh, public health, related to a waterborne bacteria, for example, and, and now specializing in cybersecurity, uh, prevention of downtime detection uh, on the different attacks on uh, critical infrastructure, such as uh, um, portable uh, drinking water or uh, industrial uh, facilities. Um, I've been uh, dealing and developing uh, different integration processes and business models of uh, high-end technologies all over the years. I spinned off with my own technology uh, with a, a smart platform driven by uh, machine learning to simplify from one end to uh, integ in the integration of high-end technologies and another hand uh, to simplify it for the end user. This brought me to specialize in the uh, hot topic and um, one of the most challenging uh, topics uh, nowadays is uh, uh, cyber attacks on critical infrastructures. And uh, this is how I came to the United States under national interest exception uh, since dealing with this topic. Well, when we talk about uh, this uh, topic of cyber attack, what really does it mean? What would you really wanna know about that? Once the first question is, we want to know that we are being attacked. We know only when the attacker let us know. One of the assumptions in the, in the market is most probably we were attacked a few months ago dealing with someone within our system could be even eight months or seven months before we know something or anything about them. And once we know, we know what they want us to know. So why do I, they attack us? Could be ransom, could be uh, uh, intelligence could be a different uh, third party interest or different country. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, uh, of aspects or reasons why to attack critical infrastructure. Everything starts like Homeland Security here in the United States, for example, has classified 16 different critical infrastructures. One of them is portable water, drinking water, wastewater, everything that deals with the water domain. And everything starts with early detection, the early detection on when we are being attacked. And one of the main thing that our technology, SIGA uh, technology brings is the detection, the early detection of our assets, main assets in level zero. Let's have a look what we really uh, bring. With the years of experience of the team that gathered and working and developed uh, SIGA technology, uh, top line of the, uh, uh, of the industry, bringing all together all the hands-on experience, not only the development of a product, but hands-on of experience on how to do that, how to work in these environments, how to analyze and, and uh, uh, have the, the conclude, right conclusions that will help our clients to take the right actions, the corrective and preventive actions regarding to the IT part and the OT part. When I say OT, I refer all the operational team that deals with the overall uh, maintenance 
or operational uh, uh, asset could be the potable water plant, could be the wastewater, could be an industrial, could be a pasteurization water, cooling water, hot water, everything that uh, each case with its own uh, challenges. The uh, uh, challenge is becoming more and more complex and therefore complicated because it's cross verticals. We can find it in different verticals from different reasons. And one of the uh, uh, um, increasing uh, problems that we have is a BMS system as well, uh, building management system that deals with smart uh, utilities. <clears throat> what we bring, uh, this uh, technology, we bring the technology to the, our clients, not only because we are aware of the risk and we know how to tackle it, but also the regulations put in place comes as a result of all the incidents. Part of them are public, part of them are discrete. But this is how and why we're working with different uh, uh, regulations from different countries. Uh, our headquarters is in Israel, but we work in Israel, in Europe, United States, North America, Latin America, I think growing. Let's have a look about the different levels, what we call, what I've mentioned level zero. What really does it mean? There isn't distinguish between two parts of this level, level zero, slash zero and one, we'll talk about that, and the other levels. The first level is the integrity of data. This is what we call the centralized data that we are used to see and work with when we process the data. The other part would be level zero when we talk about the tangible assets that are not connected directly to the internet. For example, a pump, a heat exchanger, uh, dose of chemicals. If we think about a pot potable water uh, um, uh, plant, that would be, uh, suspended solids uh, uh, process where we need a uh, coagulation process, where we need a biocide, specific biocide to those, could be a heat exchanger, could be a filter, could be anything out of these uh, uh, examples. And what we want really is to give full transparency to our clients what is going on in this level zero, because actually the hackers are going to enter from one door and try to get to these assets to manipulate these machinery, and therefore to affect on the uh, process uh, itself. So if we have a look at it, just in a simplified uh, uh, just vision, we were talking about the levels where we have servers, where we have PLCs, HMI layers between level four and level one, where we are tackling and giving the transparency in a unique way is the level zero. These machines that are here, these are the critical assets where the uh, uh, clients, uh, where the attackers, sorry, would want to get there. <clears throat> what we deliver actually with all this concept before drilling down and expecting the main, uh, explaining the main concept is the, uh, the sustainable and reliable way to give transparency to our clients to be able and see what is going on in this uh, level and compare it with the other data that they are collecting. So it is in a way autonomous, meaning it's a plug away, a, a, plug, a plug and play, sorry, a detached from the network, not connected directly to the internet. We collect, we monitor, and the, uh, the, uh, the systems, uh, the critical assets by monitoring the electrical uh, signals, which is in parallel, which has no influence or impact on the overall main process. And in a smart way, because based on artificial intelligence, our system will learn about what needs to be and what it is considered to be a normal and uh, uh, way of uh, working for each uh, critical asset whether it's a pump, whether it's, it's a changer, like we spoke later. And based on that, on each anomaly, each incident, something is, uh, is changing in the electrical signal, this will give us the indication of possible attack. So if we wanted just to see this in a, in a process, so what we will do is just to enter between the critical asset and the PLC, duplicate the signal, the electrical signal, okay, isolate it, analyze it, 
and send it to our cloud-based platform to this software. It's going to be done in real time, monitoring and giving transparency of what is going on with the critical answer. It is detached from the internet and being uh, controlled and analyzed by artificial intelligence uh, uh, module. And it will give us the possibility to analyze the historical data, therefore to conclude what should be done in, in each case. If we are going just to have a look a little bit more about that, is that we are adding another part to this uh, process. The part, one thing is to analyze and get to know that there is an anomaly, something is going uh, wrong with our, for example, filter or pump. And another thing we would, we would like to know what is really going on between the parameters that we are reading with our main uh, data, for example, SCADA. One thing is what we read in the SCADA, another thing is what we get from this uh, uh, anomaly from this system. Therefore, we can compare what is really going on, understand what the attack is all about. If we just give an example, quick example, uh, the overdose uh, uh, chemicals such as biocide to disinfect water, whether it's chlorine or whatever, it's a different biocide, will give us the possibility to understand in what level, because we will, uh, we uh, might be find ourselves that in our HDMI, meaning uh, in in uh, in a SCADA system, we will read zero anomalies. But when we read with our uh, technology, we will have the signal that our critical asset is not working good. This is how we will know, for example, that something is not working. Therefore, the outcome would be to know what to do as a corrective and preventive treatment. This is very important because in critical infrastructure, what we talk about, by the way, critical infrastructure could be also the oil, the gas, uh, real estate. It depends what we're talking, especially here in North America. So and based on the EPA and uh, the Homeland Security, there is a uh, emergency plan that needs to be uh, put in place once and if uh, and should uh, attack is taking uh, place, what should be done, how the report needs to be done, and how will we protect our main asset, which is the water, which is the flow of water, its quality, protect our public out of it. The way we do that, our software is one side, and the harder that we build, we use a shelf product components, well known. This is an example how we isolate, okay? We bring all the data through switch, analyze it and send it to the internet through the router. It could be uh, using any other components that are, that are done. We, can, we know how to adapt to each case. So it's really adapting in a way in plug and play to what the client has. And if it doesn't have, we know how to build. Part of our strategic partners and installation demonstrate that we are entering uh, to different strategic uh, places, such as New York Fire uh, Authority, uh, now uh, um, also uh, with Iran in Italy, and in Israel, obviously, different uh, strategic clients, such as the uh, Air Force. So the, uh, our experience and cross-reference that we show is that we know how to deal with different aspects, with different regulations and different situations uh, helping our clients to overcome and protect their assets. Just we uh, just a few words about uh, the way we work. We can uh, work as a center of uh, of a service as a SOC. Um, we uh, uh, implement the monitoring per site or multiple sites and bring it and control it from one monitoring uh, um, platform uh, window. Um, we actually tailor made the solution to each case. So the, uh, the way that we, uh, I will just uh, move uh, fast forward, giving the, uh, the time that I have left one minute and a half. So the process of integration is not really long. Uh, from the moment that we do perform a technical survey till we implement it, and uh, having the support, we follow uh, all the process. We help our clients how to do that. We train them. So it's not a, uh, a cell, one cell and go detached from the rest. 
<clears throat> this could uh, give us a few um, look and feel of the software that we have, the monitoring of IOS, how it looks like. This is the alerts that we can uh, have a look. The dashboard, the dashboard could be accessed from any other uh, uh, facility. And just fast forward, um, dealing with different critical infrastructures such as that I've uh, mentioned before that. For water, just to finish with uh, the example of a uh, water authority in Israel, they are using our uh, technology to detect in real time uh, anom any anomalies of the critical infrastructure, therefore to connect and relate it to the OT part and understand what needs to be done and what is going wrong. With uh, water utilities, we have other references in the world. And uh, I think with time, I just, just finished my time. Am I right? You did good. Thank you. You hit it right on the spot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate we appreciate when folks can stay on time. Thank sure. you. Um, okay. Thanks, Eric. I will open it up for questions. Um, per usual, feel free to throw them in the chat, or you can hop off mic and ask Eric anything you'd like. Let's pause real quick. Eric, could you maybe just go into a little bit more detail about what the actual installation looks like and sure. kind of what, what you would do for that? <clears throat> Excuse me. Sure, let's try. When we go to uh, an installation, typical installation, let's go back and see. We have the software and hardware, okay? The software would look like something like this, okay? A web-based platform. And the hardware would be a box, okay? would be a box that include different components such as we saw in this picture. All of these components will be included in a box, an electrical box that will be connected to different IOs, okay? And this will be uh, uh, transmitted to uh, the uh, internet, the cloud-based platform. What does it mean really what I just said? It's literally meaning that if we have a pointer to monitor, such as the pump, we will monitor the electrical signal of the pump. This will be read and analyzed through uh, our, by our uh, technology using um, machine learning. We'll read the electrical signal, therefore we understand whether or whether not it is within the right range that we expect it to, uh, to be. And if not, it will transmit an alert and we we'll understand and we can understand what will happen. So the hardware, the idea is to read this electrical signal to process it and to send it to our software, cloud-based software. And the software can be accessed through PC, through mobile, et cetera. Awesome, okay, thanks for that clarification. And you guys would go on site to do that? You would come and install it yourselves? We have different way to work because sometimes we will do it directly, but most of the time, for example, here in North America, we will work with different partners. We can work through a partner. We can work with the client to show them. We have all the possibilities to help our client to train and show. We are not sending a box and expecting the client to install it. And I would like to add a quick comment. Not only that we don't do that, especially in water and critical infrastructure, we know how to help our clients to modify and detect where are the critical points to monitor and why. Because to relate between water quality, its hardness, for example, and heat exchanger with its energy consumption, there are a lot of reasons why it will uh, act or behave one way or the other. So we know how to prescribe the solution with our client, integrate it, the hardware, the software, train and support. Okay, great, thank you. Um, okay, any last questions for Eric? Okay. We never know if whether it's good or bad, but I hope <laughs> it, in any case, yeah. any question I would love to, uh, to uh, hear. I can see Christina. Thank you very much for joining, Christina. Good to see you. You're welcome. It's good to see you too, Eric. I'll jump in with a question and also just recognizing like this is a very specialized space where um, a lot of the folks on the on the call are not IT, OT 
every day. There's they're they're there to represent and link other parts of the organization. So um although cool deep might be uh that might be your second hat, but <laughs> <laughs> but um I guess my question stems from your presentation you've presented to other groups. So um there was a question about scalability and how sort of small like you know, some of the folks on the call have really large systems and multiple facilities at various locations. What would be a good use case as a starting point? And is this really a scalable solution? Um, and then the second question is, is like, who do you deal with at the utility typically? Is it the IT, the CIO? Who are the folks that you're really speaking to? Is, is it more of the IT versus OT and those at the treatment facilities, for example? So, thank you very much for these good questions. The first question uh, about the scalability. Uh, first of all, uh, it is scalable because it depends on number of you know, points to monitor. Therefore, we can have a proof of value with a client starting off with just eight or six points to monitor. We can scale to 72 points. It depends. We have a biopharmaceutical company here with 72 points, but it's scalable. So actually, uh, how do we grow? We adapt the software to read and monitor more points, but in the hardware uh, side, we will connect more and more points to the same box. If we have to duplicate the box, we will duplicate the box. So actually, it's easy, straightforward, the scalability. And this is why we tailor made the solution based on due diligence that we do with a client. This brings me to the second question that deals with what are we dealing with? IT, OT, focusing on water domain. So the water domain, um, we have to speak, we have the capability to speak with different stakeholders, meaning the IT in their language, the OT in their language, to bring the synergy between them because it's very, uh, very uh, important. When we speak with a CIO, for example, about the measurements that need to be put in place and uh, what regulations we need to meet uh, um, established by the Homeland Security or the EPA, this would be to talk about uh, scale assistant to talk about uh, PLC. This this would be the language. With the OT part, would be to understand with them what would be of their interest to control. For example, a specific pump, a specific heat exchanger. Understand this side. Why would they worry about that? And what changes the water quality will give them problems? And how to bring both sides into synergy in the table. So we have this capability and capacity to do so. So it depends in each client. Uh, we we, I can see also clients that actually they have a part-time job, let's say, uh, to deal with uh, cybersecurity because they don't really uh, uh, have this uh, space yet in their organization. So we, we know how to adapt and how to speak to each client based on the needs. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, Christine. Cool, yeah, make, I, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'll make a comment that uh, we deployed uh, this technology at uh, our Lockport powerhouse. So where we generate hydropower about 40 million kilowatt hours per year. So I think this technology was deployed there in 2018. So one of our clients, okay. So, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Uh, we do uh, work. We just scaled uh, with uh, New York Power Authority. We are uh, uh, talking to uh, the MTA in New York, uh, but we are we're also uh, in contact with the Washington Water uh, District and the Nassau County Water. So we are growing, but we want to grow not only as a technology um, closed box uh, providers. We want to be the best and and in, in the out there because we understand the overall process when we talk about port, uh, water processes. This is what makes us different, to our opinion, from others. And the technology, obviously, which is unique, the dealing with early detection. This is about it. It starts there. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. Um, okay. Any last? I guess last call for questions from Eric before we close. 
Okay. Hearing none, Eric will be in, in touch with any feedback people provide. And um, thank you again for coming and spending some time with us today. Sure, it's a pleasure. Always a pleasure with I. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. Take care. Okay. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye.